finished my eight my eight year old's still in school. Oh boy. Oh. And my seven month old looks like she's about to take a nap. Oh man. Do you uh we can do this another time, man. It's all good. Fan, you know. No, no, no. I'm I'm fine. There might be a little uh, baby babble um <laughs> outside that. It's not a problem. <laughs> all right. Well that sounds good. Um Gabe, I, I... Uh, yeah, of course. Should I say that? Here, take that. Here, here. All right, I got it covered. Uh, it's funny. Oh, well, mouth done and done. Done and done. It's, it's funny. It's been so long, man. It's it. So you have an eight-year-old and a seven-month-old. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. Um. The that's I I uh. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm impressed because when I have, you know, I'm, my kids are out. They're grown and done and out. And um, so I don't, when I hear people with newborns, I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I couldn't do it. That just scares me <laughs> to death, man. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's, it's my fault for marrying a woman 13 years younger than me. <laughs> That's not, I'm not seeing a bad side of that. What's that? I said I, I don't I don't see a bad side to that. That's all good. I don't know, but I mean, but like you know, like she's thirty and like I want to have kids, and I'm just yeah. like I'm almost forty three. I don't know if I want to have kids, but you know, like, yeah, obviously I was uh, I, I I'm I'm uh, absolutely happy to have a, a, a yeah a, a new little little person yeah, but uh, it definitely has its uh, you know it, oh it's challenging it's trials it's challenging yeah, challenges yeah absolutely. Definitely, and with and with running a new school and getting all that stuff going, I mean that's it's a lot, man. It's a lot. And so yeah, yeah. I mean, so prior to everything in <laughs> getting crazy in California, she <laughs> was my wife. Uh, works for the state, and so okay. my, my the seven month old would go to daycare um, by her work in Santa Clarita, and then I would you know I'd be working at the gym um, all morning into the night, and then I would. Uh, Thursday was kind of like the, uh, my day with her. It was kind of like my day off, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Thursday was the only day that that I did daddy daycare. Okay. And now it's uh, you know the daycare is closed and uh, excluding Monday, my wife works from home. Okay. But uh, and my eight year old uh, lives with their lives with their mother in Vegas most of the time. Okay. But um, because I haven't seen her in two months her mother allowed her to be here for a little over a month she's been in Spring Lake oh wow so yeah so it's uh I mean everything's different you know yeah um, not a bad thing but it's, it's it, you know it's just different <laughs> yeah definitely absolutely yeah. that's so you um with with the new gym I, I know that is on hold as well right now for you as it is for yeah. most everybody in um, and that, so you just opened the gym a couple, what, like three years ago, two, three? Uh, it was been about two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing all of it and, um, it, I, you know, when, when I started to do, um, think about doing podcasting and stuff and just getting into this again, I was like, oh man, I gotta, there's so many people I want to talk to, but you were definitely on, uh, you know, one of my top 10 because of just your history and, and the, um, to be honest, I mean, you're, you're like one of the pioneers of, of, well, back in the day it was no holds barred, you know, and now it's, it's MMA and it's kind of, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I, I, I don't look at it that way. I mean, I, I definitely saw it in, in, I, through, through, uh, multiple changeups in, in MMA. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's amazing to see when, when I first started fighting, it was illegal to now it being like one of the biggest sports, you know, financially available. And I mean, everybody knows it. it they at least know, you know, like a Conor McGregor or, right. or someone like in a time frame when, you know, if you, if when I, when I started this, if maybe someone knew who Royce Gracie was, that was about the extent of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, uh, just the, the transition has been pretty crazy. So, I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm fortunate that I got to see the transition and I got to see it go from, again, like I fought illegally. Um, right. That's... I remember, I think my third fight was at a, was at a, a nightclub in, 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 uh, in, in Hollywood. 
and the promoter's like, if we get ready to tell the cops that this is pro wrestling and that, you know, <laughs> we already know what's, what's going to be the outcome. And I was like, uh, wait, we can be arrested? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's in isn't that crazy that it's gone from that to what it is today and just the um because I mean you were really like I said you were you were in the mix of it all that's and I, I started jujitsu back in the day too I started with the you know Pedro and Rancho and um gosh I'm, I'm like ninety four ninety five whatever I don't even know it's been so long and then um I watched the kind of the changes and um. You know, when I started writing and and doing things like that, it was kind of um, from the outside perspective of watching these people, you know, the changes and, and everything and watching. That's kind of when I saw you too, you know, you were um, starting to make your way through things. I mean, you had some killer fights and you had, um, you got into uh, the WEC, you became the champion there. You had what, like a nine fight win streak or something like that? I mean, it was... Um, I- yeah, I think I, I. You know what? I, I I think at one point, yeah, I did. I was on like a nine five week ministry, and that was when I was being um, looked at by Pride and yeah. in the UFC. Um, I mean, you know, I I, I definitely, I, 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 in my mind at least, um, I never reached the potential that I felt that I had. But I mean, that you know, that was unfortunately just <laughs> the luck of the draw. I mean, I think uh, if there was one point in my career that kind of changed the dynamic of where I was going was the ultimate fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for, for, for better or worse. Um, okay. um, but I, I feel like that was, that was really a, a transformation. And I, in a lot of ways, I, uh, you know, uh, my manager, uh, you know, Ed Sears, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ed, Ed I, I was like, let's go pride. Cause I mean, for me, you know, sorry, you know, too, that was the only, Japan was the place where, MMA was, was massive, and, and in the States, no one really knew anything. I mean, right. I remember watching, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, was it Frank, Frank Shamrock versus oh, Peter, Peter Ruiz, uh, at a, at a, at a sports bar in, in San Francisco. Um, and I mean, that's a, at the time, that was a huge fight, but they fought for like 1,500 people in like Alabama or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, it's like yep. the, the time frame, like, in, as far as in the States, no one knew what, what MMA was, but Japan was massive. Right. And so, uh, when I got an opportunity, actually, they, they offered me to fight Gomi when Gomi was on uh, a massive win streak. And, uh, I said, let's do it, let's do it. And it's like, oh, no, let's, let's keep, let's keep moving your career forward. And, you know, the, the UFC was starting to, to make some real headway and, and uh, was like, you know, I think we, we, UFC would be a better bet. And I was like, no, let's, I'll fight Gomi. I mean, he's the best guy in the world. Why wouldn't I want to fight the best guy in the world? I right. mean, this is a big deal. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. F it. Isn't this what I'm in this for? Like, let's do this. And I, uh, I, I regret never offering, having that opportunity. But, you know what? It's uh, finger here or there, right? Right. Well, no, you know, it's it. It's the path that we take. I mean, it's it's something that um, the decisions we make and the and the chances that we take. And you are one of those guys that stepped out and took chances at every 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 opportunity. You you didn't back down from anything. You always were moving forward and wanting to um, improve things. And you 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 made um, a difference to a lot of people when you when you started making those changes after even the ultimate fighter you started to you went in and you fought you man you were the you were the champ for wec and uh was it tachi tp tachi yeah tps yeah Um, yeah, dude that's that's amazing well i mean listen i i definitely you know i i feel like i had an an amazing career and i did a lot of fun stuff but you know i i I don't (laughs) I don't think that that's that impressive. So, no, you know what? <laughs> I'm seven months old doesn't think I'm that impressed. But uh, no, no. Um, I think every fighter, even if, like like even a guy like Rick and Anderson Silva, I'm sure that he has regrets about things in his career. I mean, and, like sure. dude, he's one of the best guys ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can imagine like a guy like DJ Penn, who who you know was a training partner of mine and, and someone that I looked up to is like unbeatable. I mean. Look what has right. happened. You know, I mean, think you've like one of the guys uh-huh. eight fight losing streak or something. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, you know, look, it's 
I, I, the journey is a journey, and and uh, I'm very very thankful that I got the opportunity to do that where I did. But yeah, I'm you know I'm 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 content and happy with all my life you know. Well, that's and I think that's that's the biggest thing. I think that's where you make a a difference. Um, one of the conversations that I hear a lot come up with people is um, they they talk about you know fighters retiring and then coming back and fighters retiring and coming back and doing all that. And um, you started you started a new journey. You started a new path and you started a, a, a new direction in your life with opening the gym and and uh, working becoming a coach, which in my opinion is probably one of the harder jobs in the in this field um <laughs> it you know, really is I, I, especially like uh especially with fighters oh. you know, and i don't have a lot of fighters just for that reason alone because i was look i was a young dumb fighter you know what i mean and, and you're <laughs> self-serving and as you should be because you know i mean you're you're going into to mutual combat for money yeah yeah <laughs> you know what right. I mean? so right um and but I also think that the kids, and again, now I, now I'm an old man. I feel like the kids now just don't understand, you know. But uh, I think because that there's fame and there's money, um, when I fought, that was not what you fought for. No, it, it mean, wasn't. You know, I made five hundred dollars to fight for the WC title. I mean, that, that two hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty was my purse. Isn't that crazy? You know? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know. It, but I did it because I loved it. I did it because right. I was passionate about it. I got an opportunity to, you know, uh, find out things about myself that I didn't know existed. What? And that was the reason to fight more than, than, than uh, you know, I'm going to get chicks or I'm going to get, you know, <laughs> to be able to go, to, go, go, to, go to parties with celebrities. And, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a trip how people think now this is, uh, you know. It's, is that I was that's one of the things I was going to talk to you about is because you you did start you know like I said when it was illegal and it's it's become the big one of the biggest things um what's what's what do you think is the major one of the major changes for uh the old school and the new school like this this you know the new generation of of MMA but that was that was very well put because I I, I kind of agree with you people are doing it for the I Okay, I, I I might get in trouble for this, and I'm I'm gonna. It's all good. I I believe people are doing it for the wrong reasons. Now, I think there are certain people, not everybody, obviously, but I believe that if you truly love the sport, you love to fight, and you love to do that. That's that's the prime reason you should be in it. If you're in it just to say, oh, I went in and I got my name on a poster, and I went in and fought, um, you know, and now I'm gonna go hang out with chicks. I I just that doesn't sit well with me. It um. And that might be my old school mentality. I don't know, but well, no, I, I, I I'm in 100 percent agreement. And unfortunately, I, I have the newer kids that that like. But here's a perfect example, and I, I'm not even gonna give his name because he's still one of my active fighters, and okay. I actually like the kid. He, he just he's he's there and needed to kind of. I, I he's he's 23 and very very gifted kid, but uh, he went on on a chair as an amateur. And this is before, um, so he was just coming to train with me. He wasn't, I wasn't coaching him. Uh -huh. I only coached him after his, his, he, uh, went on an 0 2 pro, pro run after I think he was an undefeated amateur. And, uh, so he called me up before his, uh, the week before his pro debut. And he's like, hey, are, are you going to come to my meet and greet this weekend? I go, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I'm going to do a meet and greet. Are you, are you going to come? And I go, what are you having a meet and greet for? He's like, oh, you know, because I'm fighting next week. And I go, yeah, you should be focused on your fight. You shouldn't be focused on, on trying to be someone that you're not. You're an amateur fighter. You have no reason to, to have a meet and greet. Like, what kind of, like, just arrogant stupidity are you on? Chris? And, you know, he hangs up the phone on me and he's like, oh, you don't get it. I'm going to be a star. And then he gets knocked out in his first fight. Oh. And That's... then, you know, and, and then he calls me a couple of weeks later, oh, you know what, you were right, I should have been focused. And I go, yeah, you probably should have been. Yeah. And so, you know, he was coming in train with me again. And then he takes another fight against a really tough guy, and the guy beats him by decision. And then he finally goes, hey, will you work with me? And I go, well, first you need to strip your ego. You got to figure out what you're fighting for. And... Look, you have talent. I'm not going to deny that you have physical talent. You're you need you're an athlete. Right. But athleticism means absolutely nothing if your head is not right there. It's true. And you know, this this new young arrogance where like I wanna be a celebrity, I wanna be famous, instead of going out there and being about the fight. 
Right. It's about the fight, man. And nothing else really matters. And like, that's the one thing that I feel like there's a big difference of. And this is, you know, from my own experience. Right. You right. know, I'm, I'm that old war horse that, that's sitting there going like, what are you doing this for, man? Like, <laughs> it, like, like there has to be something bigger than, than you know, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm good at it and I can become famous and make money from it. Right, right. But no, like, but if, if you're an athlete, go do something else athletic. They're much easier yeah. and, and better. You know what? The, the best thing you do, become an MLB, like, 50, 50 round pick. You make six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars a year, and you won't do a thing. Right. That's there. You go. And and, and it and you, less. You, you still will be making way more than if you were a champion in the UFC. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yep. Like really, like you, you you banking on fighting is is just ridiculous. And then yeah, I mean yeah, I couldn't. I'm I'm unfortunately a realist with all of my guys Good. and. You know, but but I feel like it it needs you need to be. I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit there and tell you how great you are. That's not my job. My right. job is to get you as prepared as you can be, and to find the reason why you're going out there to do it. Dude, that's that's so well put, and that's I think a lot of people miss that point. They still to this day, you know, you you watch some fighters go in there, and I just. I, they're doing it. I, I, yeah, I just, I believe they're doing it for the wrong reasons, and it could be their coaching. You know, like, like you said, well, being a realist with your coach. Your your coach needs to be able to come up and tell you, look, this is where your head needs to be. You can't be focused on other things. You're about to get your head smashed in. Come on, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like that yeah, guy across yeah. the cage. I mean, if, if you're if you're more concerned about about you know what your t-shirt's going to look like and right. what people are thinking about you, more so than the man who is preparing to decimate you. Right. Then, then, then you are in the wrong profession. You are. You're 100%. in the wrong profession. 100%. Agreed. And, uh, and, and also, I, I, I think that, that it, and, and some people will be upset about this, but, but I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> MMA, uh, for better or worse, has become more like WWE. People are understanding that, that like being able to talk smack and have a quote-unquote character it's far more important than actually being the best athlete and best fighter you can be. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. like a, a, a perfect example is a, a Colby Covington. That D-bag, he even readily admits, I'm putting on a persona. Right. I am the bad guy. Just like Chael Sonnen was the bad guy. Right. Just like uh, Conor McGregor is the bad guy. And you know what? For... for, for Better or worse, they're all successful because of it, but it, it's a detriment to the sport as a whole. Okay, why? Why do you? Why do you think that? What? Why do you think it's a, a detriment well, to the as a whole? Well, because well, so, so, because it becomes more of a show than okay. about the fight. Okay. Yep. I, not, I, I, the reason why I don't like pro wrestling, I liked pro wrestling when I was a little kid when I thought it was real. As soon as I found out that it wasn't real, it had no interest to me whatsoever. There, there you go. There you go. I, and, I well put. And that, and that was what, I, what was so appealing about MMA. It's like, oh my gosh, this is real. I mean, yeah. in the time frame, like I was, like you know, the Valley Tudor days, like where, where guys would headbutt each other in thirty minute matches, and like, uh, you know, I, I that was like terrifyingly real. Yeah. Yes, you know? and uh, um, that's that had far more appeal to me of like a test of who you are, what your real inner fortitude is, more than than what type of showman I can be and what type of smack I can say to somebody. And then when the guy like perfect, like watch what when, when Connor was fighting Habib and Habib is beating his ass and he's like, oh, it's just it's just it's just business, it's just it's just business, business. right? And Habib's like, this isn't business to me, motherfucker. Right, I'm here to destroy you. This is. This is real to me. This, and I, you know what? And that, like, I, I respected it a lot because of that. People like got, got upset about it, but I'm like, no, that is a real fighter. That is a guy who he's not yep. there for bravado. He's not there. You can talk about the business all you want. His business is in that ring. Yep. His business is is, is is a hurt is a hurt game. Yep, absolutely. And that's that's one thing that I um, I agree with you. I saw that and I was like. Um, I, I, I don't know why you would say this is just business. I, your business should have been done prior to this, like getting prepared. And I, I, I was surprised at the, uh, 
the domination on that fight. I really was. I, I, I knew I had a feeling Khabib would win that one, but man, that was that was craziness. It was uh, it was kind of an eye opener. Well, I, I thought it was hilarious that he's like, it's just business. It's just business. Yeah. Basically, what he's saying is, look, I'm just playing a show. I'm here to play. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not here to really like. You know, I don't really have these feelings towards you. And Habib's, no, you're here to fight. Yeah. You better bring. You better bring all that bravado, all that talk. You better bring that to the actual match. The, yep. And you know? um, I agree. I, I just. It, it's a different. You know. I. I have eighteen on record pro wins, and I have eight pro losses. And I only have two decisions, a, a win and a loss, out of all those fights. That's because and you... And so you cannot tell me, even if you were to watch those two those two decisions, that I'm not trying to finish the fight the whole time. You, uh, That's interesting that you bring that up. I was listening to one of your... Um, I had The Braga, when you, when you fought uh, Van der Braga? Yeah, yeah. Um, that the I was listening to the commentary on that um, a while back, and I I just grabbed it again the other day because I was like, oh yeah, want to go back and you know reminisce, look at stuff, and you know things like that. And I saw that match, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that match. In the first round, the guy was talking about your the commentator was talking about your um your like cage your caginess, like you you felt it out a little bit but you were never like if you felt like it started to slow the pace down or the your opponent would slow the pace down you would not allow that to happen you you may let it go for a little bit but you were always the one that was like all right come hell or high water i'm gonna get ko'd or you are or there's gonna be a submission we're gonna do this and and you were always going in it you know i mean you did it tactically you didn't do it you know just head headlong and in the second round, you came out, and I think it was not too short after that that you caught him with a right, and they ended up guillotining him. And yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember just. I mean, at that point, Vonder was fifteen and zero. Yeah, I had watched a few of his fights, and I actually trained with him. And I knew what he was really, really good at, and I knew I needed to be a little more tactical than just you know. Like, obviously, like we're, we're both grapplers, but at that point, I was a brown belt. He was. I think a three-time black belt world champion. Right. Um, so, so, so you know, like my, my idea, like I'm not gonna particularly take it to the ground right. unless it's advantageous. Um, and so it, there's a little more feeling on that fight than most of my fights, just because you know my respect towards him. Right. But it also came down to like, no, let's let's do this. You know, I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not. I'll be tactical for a minute, but at some point. Let, let's get this going. Yeah, it's got to happen. It's yeah. some, it's got to have an ending. Um, that's that's another thing that's that's really kind of tough, you know, going against because it was such a small world at the time. Like dealing with, um, you know, you're training with all these different people, and you may have had to have fought a couple of people that you had respect for, and that you maybe even trained with and friend considered even friends. Um, you know, and that had that that kind of era was was tough. It was not a I don't know, man. That's I. I always look at the guys that you know were pioneers and started this stuff as, as the 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 foundation of it all. And they they right. you know you guys really did bring a lot of um, changes to to mixed martial arts. And I you know I think it's overlooked a lot. I really do. I think that. Um, my wife would always tell me, um, you know, because I was always the one that's like, "Oh, I hope this stuff gets so big. Oh my God, I, I love this. I, I just want it to be so big." She's like, "You're gonna regret that one day. You are gonna regret it." And she's right. You know, I, I, I love the fact that that jujitsu is still kind of a small community and it has a, a relatively small world, um, where you know mixed martial arts is huge and and uh, so, I kind of like to stay hidden a little bit, <laughs> so. Sure. I, I, you know, I I actually agree 100 percent because that was how I looked at it too. Like, um, I liked you know we always wanted to be bigger and right. like, when even when it got sanctioned in California, we're like, oh, holy shit! Like, right, we can fight in California. What the you know hell? I mean? and, um, <laughs> yeah, like, like like just to think like you know, and then like the ultimate fighter started to happen, and then yeah. I I, I, I you know, the funniest part is I was just talking to my friend about the other days. Um, I remember when Stefan Bonner. I got second 
and he started uh, banging uh, this this porn star. Oh yeah. I can't remember her name. Like uh, right. blonde. I've actually hung out with her multiple times. Super cool chick, but like she kind of became a you know a, a MMA groupie of sorts, and like. For, for Stephen Bonner, like, he's just kind of a nerdy dude, and, mm-hmm. like, basically when she started hitting on him, like, he was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, this is a girl that, that I watched in porn. Right, Which right. Is, like, that's such a nerdy, nerdy thing to do, but th- th- that shows you, like, that there's this massive transition in MMA. You know what I mean? Right, right. At, at that moment, like, he had mainstream, he was mainstream famous, and so he was getting things that, would never have happened back in the day. You know what <laughs> right? I mean? Like, like I, I'm sure there, 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 were, there were guys that, you know, that were paying porn stars, you know, just because the counterculture and, like, strippers and whatnot. But but as far as, like, Stephen Bonner was not one of those guys. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. And uh, with the, the, that transformation, like, you'd be like, oh, that's great. But at the same time, you're like, is it really? I mean, I don't know. I kind of liked it being this grassroots thing that – you know, the fighters knew with each other, and, and there was a small fan base, but it didn't go past that. And I, there's, there's something I appreciate about that, but it also, I mean, yeah. I, I guess with everything, like, growth is, is, is better, you know what I mean? And, sure. And, uh, it, well, I don't know. It, it affords, um, with the growth, it affords different thing, different um, prosperities, uh, you know, the gyms, the the fighters themselves get to um, move on and, and do their thing, you know, maybe grow and and become coaches and or things like that but you know not always they always say it and I, I hear this all the time you know fighters some fighters just don't make a great coach but I I don't believe so in your in your case I I see that um you know you you have the same uh thoughts and uh drive as like you have you you try to impart that on your fighters you um but you, you give it your own flavor. And I see that you are really trying to, um, well, everything's on pause now, obviously, but you're really trying to make a difference in this. And I think that being straightforward with your, with your fighters in the beginning and just right up front and say, Hey, look, this is what you need to do. You can't be doing, you know, get, get your focus and go. And, uh, I I think that's important. Um, you know, it's, I, I didn't compete. Um, I competed as, you know, in, in jiu-jitsu, but I never um, got into any kind of main fights or anything like that. But I... Well, I, 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 I don't... I, it's, not, it's not a career that I would suggest for, for, for most <laughs> You know, I like really, it's not... It, it, there's, there's such little benefit for as much loss as you get from it. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean... My neck is infused. My back is infused. I still can't breathe out of my nose. My MCL has been torn for five years. Um, you know, it's Dang. The, the wear and tear on your body is insane. Um, it, it, it's uh, you know, I, I definitely talk to my guys like don't. <laughs> there are other things like really like it's you know it's and then also what it's a rough life. Is, if you're not if you're not an elite guy and you're not then, then you become a journeyman. And then you're just fighting, you know, to make a couple of grand here and there. Right. Like that, that in my opinion, that, that's even worse. You know what yeah. I mean? When you get to that journeyman. I have a couple of friends that are really good fighters, but they, you know, went on like a three or four fight loss. Uh, and uh, and because of that, you know, that, that they, they win or they lose. and They fight a little bit here. They fight a little bit there. They make some money, you know, but, but they're just a journeyman. I mean, not that they're bad fighters, but it's, it's just a rough life, you know? It is. It's a, it, yeah. It's got to be. It's hard on your body. It's hard on your mind. It's hard on. I. I just. I. I don't have. I couldn't see doing that. I, and not having a backup plan is something that I. I. I don't. I. I, I see a lot of people doing that now, um, especially with the you know yeah, well, this because I know you have some backup. Um, well, I actually didn't have a backup. Really? Um. I, yeah. I'm. I, in the respect of like I. Now, I I feel like I'm a resilient guy, and I have the ability to. So for like um, when this all when when I, when I initially stopped fighting, mm-hmm. I took a corporate job. My buddy had a consolidation company in, in Ranch Cucamonga, um, and I just jumped into that. You know, and I had this opportunity to make good money, and and it's something I, I don't know anything about consolidation. 
but uh, you know, it, he put me in a position where I have to learn, and and uh, you know, um, it, especially with livelihood, I'm gonna I'm going to make it happen. Right. Right. And and you know, uh, of the, the the qualities I have, survival instincts are very very high. Um, well, you think, know, um, I, and, I think that's I, that's uh that's very important to have actually as a as a fighter. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I think you're. It is important, but yeah. but it also uh, I've been around MMA for so long that unfortunately m- most fighters are kind of stupid. Not I and mean, that's a, that's a generalization, and that doesn't mean all of them. Right. But um, you know, even the ones that that like that can like, like for example, and, and I don't care if, if you put this or not, but like Tito Ortiz, uh-huh. Tito Ortiz thinks of himself like he's a smart guy. He is a Dumbass. <laughs> okay. Like it, it's like seriously, it, like like I, 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 I'm such a good businessman. Like no, I think a one point punishment of athletic because of him was doing well, but it, it's a bankrupt company. He hasn't had a gym that 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 has happened. It, you know that's done anything. Now he's been able to to keep fighting because of his UFC being you know the light heavyweight champion of the UFC. But like fighting in combates now, like it's just it it. A good Good. businessman would have been able to pull out of MMA or move forward in a different realm and make money doing it. And he's just not, you know what I mean? Yep, yeah, I I, I agree. And and I mean, you know, I I, uh, I, I just use him as an example because he's uh, an epitome of of, of fame and and recognition in the sport that that I never reached at all. But, um, you know, he, I wonder if he likes to liken himself as a good businessman. But he tried a management company. He failed at that. His his, his uh, brand failed. His gym failed. Um, you know, so now he's that aging 43-year-old fighter still fighting to make a paycheck. And that's that's what it goes back to, I think, with, with not having the right tools or the right backing. Like you have to have, I, I believe with, especially with this sport, cause it's so fair weathered. Um, you know, you really do have to have a part of a, a plan B. You cannot go into this sport and not have a plan B. Um, you know, yeah. grappling maybe, you know, I, I always wondered about that. Like why, why not get into, you know, doing some like s- submission undergrounds or, you know, doing something that's a little less hard on your body. Why, why fight? And I was actually going to ask you about that. Well, have you ever considered any of those like fighting, going for submission underground and, you know, um, you know, I, I did a, uh, uh, I got prepared for a Sambo match two years ago now. Okay. Uh, combat Sambo. So it's striking, but it, it's in a key and it's primarily grappling. Um, and, um, I, Spent two months in, in a in a camp type environment, getting prepared, and I was so beat up after the match. The match only was two minutes. I never was any danger to the whole match. Um, it was over. Yeah, two two and a, two minutes twenty seconds, something like that. Yeah. I finished the match, but my 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 left shoulder and arm didn't work for six months after. Holy that. shit. And I had just opened up my I opened up my gym a week after the bout, um, and I taught for six months, unable to tie my belt a hundred percent. And I just I, I can't. Well, I, I, more than likely, what I'm guessing is that my neck, because it's been fused, uh-huh. got inflamed, and the inflammation puts strain onto my upper upper uh, body. Okay. And I just I can't. I can't train the way I want to train. I've thought about like maybe doing a tournament here or there, but if I do a tournament, it's going to be one of those things that like I just jump in that day and just do it. I can't like the preparation actually is what kills me now. It's so it, it's a lot. I, mean, I I I I I think I'll be a competitor for a lifetime. Right. You know what I mean? That doesn't like I, I still like whenever I go to the fight, go to the fights, or, or uh, I, I go to corner. My first feeling is like I need to do this again. You know what I mean? But but then also the reality of if I get injured trying to get ready for this, then that takes away from my business. Right. That that does so, cause a problem. So you know, I, I all 
of that type of stuff, I, I think it's great. And I, 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 I do there's like a Gord, like a guy like Gordon Ryan making so much money just doing grappling. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember if you got a T-shirt for a grappling match. Like that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, uh, I, well, I, I, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to bring his name up, but um, I had a, a former training partner of mine that was, uh, uh, he was sponsored by Tap Out. Mm-hmm. And whenever he would do a tournament, Tap Out would give him a hoodie or something, and we all thought it was like, dude, he got, like, he's getting Tap Out hoodies, like, for free. We were, all of us were, like, on, and he was on Crowd 9, too. Like, right. yeah, you know, you get Tap Out here. Like, that, that was a big deal for the grappling, you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And I think there's maybe a, a couple of super fights where you'd win a key if you won the match. Like, you know, like uh, uh, from that to, you know, uh, I think my buddy Vinny just did a match for 25 grand. Yeah. And it's crazy, man. Like, it's, he, it's awesome that that is an opportunity now. And I, and I, I uh, maybe that would have been the route I went if that was more viable. But then again, like, I didn't start fighting as a career. <laughs> Right, right. Like, I didn't. Right, you didn't. I, I didn't fight him. I my first fight ever was I went to Japan for two uh, two months. I trained with uh, a bunch of the, the top guys there, um, and I did good enough to be like, you know what, I can fight one time. And the, my idea was to fight one time to see if I could actually do it because I was terrified of it, and that was. That was what was, what was going to be one one and done, really. Um, but you know, I uh, Wait, I lost my first fight. Um, I, I I had gotten uh, 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 yes, yeah, massively sick uh, the week of the fight. Okay. Uh, I had uh, what I had bronchitis. I, I fought with bronchitis, um, oh. and um, I got knocked out. And uh, I was like, I got to do it again. I got to do it when I'm when I'm healthy and see how it goes. And then I won that fight, and then I won on that massive winning streak, including, you know, winning the, the WC title and, and defending it twice. And, um, you know, uh, then it just, to be honest, actually, when I won the, the WC title, I had this guy I was doing private lessons with, this guy named Craig Lyman. And, and Craig uh, um, owns, what is Craig? He owns uh, um, an investment firm, very, very wealthy, successful investment firm. Okay. And I was doing privates with, with, with Craig, and I call him, I'm like, you know what, I think I'm going to retire, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to go back to school, and then I eventually want to go to law school, because that was oh. what I was planning to do prior to all of this nonsense that I got involved in. Wow. And, and Craig was in his late 30s at this point, and he goes, if there's one thing that I regret of all the things that I have in my life, and, you know, and at this point, he was very successful. He had multiple houses and all the money that, you know, anyone could, could, could want. And, you know, me being a young guy, looking at him like, I, wow, I wish I had all this stuff. Right. And right. Uh, he, he goes, I wish I would have started jiu-jitsu earlier. And I wish I could have pushed myself physically more than I can, than I did. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're always going to have the opportunity mentally to do stuff. You can go to you can go to medical or you can go to, to law school at any point in your life. You're not going to be able to physically do what you're doing now forever. That's true. Agreed. And I went. You know what? He you know, he was well. I thought he was right, and I kept going on my path. You know, and uh, I thank him for it. I think that 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 you know, uh, in that moment where I felt like you know. Well, and again, like there, there was no money. I had already, right. I had done way yeah. more than I ever thought I would. At that point, I think I was uh, like eleven and one, and uh, you know, for me to be like walk away at eleven and one as WC champion, um, you know, uh, I felt like I had uh, attained far. But again, coming from a guy who was planning just fighting once to being the WC champion um, at the time. Um, when I won the WC champion, the UFC didn't even have a lightweight champion. Right, right. Like they had already they had taken out the lightweight the, division. They were already so, moving that out, right? I remember that. So, realistically, the WC at that point, like, that is unfortunately the king of the kings for the, like, the two U.S. titles at the Right. You know, and uh, so to win that was like, you know, for, for me, I, I was just... 
I was a, I hit the guy that, that, that fought just because he wanted to try it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't, I, I wasn't one of those guys like, I'm going to be a world champion and I'm going to fight in the UFC and I'm going to do all this stuff. All that was, like, what? It, no, I, I wanted to fight one time. It was a secondary. Um, you, you said something about that kind of caught my attention. You, uh, yeah. you, you went, you said you were going to fight the, just the one time and you were going to go out to Japan and, um, that you were terrified about it. You were terrified to fight. What was the, what was the, cause a lot of people won't even go past that. Like they don't let their fear or their, um, or they, they, they allow their fear to keep them from moving forward and, and, uh, doing the things that they do. You went in terrified, lost, yeah. still came <laughs> And still came back and continued. What, what got you through that? What was the, what was the, st- how, how did you get past? Like, I don't know that a lot of fighters would have, would have been like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going back for a second round. Um, you know, I, th- I think some people, so that, to me, that says a lot. Cause when, when I, when I saw your, um, you know, the, the win loss, I, I saw that and I'm like, wow, I wonder you know, what went through your mind when you thought, okay, I just lost this. And, and you said you were sick, bronchitis, all these things. So a lot of things probably contributed to it, but you went back and fought again. Yeah. So I, do you remember? I, you know I mean, it's, I, I, well, I, mean I, 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 I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I feel that, and even in my jiu-jitsu career, because I was never, you know, I, I, I won and lost when I was doing jiu-jitsu, but I sure. wasn't like, a, you know, a phenom. But, but the way I got good at jiu-jitsu was I got tapped and I would jump back in. Right. I would get beat and I'd jump back in. And <laughs> um, it felt more about, um, you know, the strength to perseverance. And, like, one, one thing that I've learned through MMA, which I still pass on to my students and I, and I, and I, and I feel is important. Like that, 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 that MMA parallels life is as long as you keep getting up and going forward, you're eventually going to succeed. You're eventually mm-hmm. going to find, you know, what it, and it may not be the exact thing you want, right? but at the very, very minimum, any failures that, that, that occur, you will understand that you, it wasn't because of you. Right. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Like, so, like, you know, it, it, look, there, there are variables that, that we have no control over, right? Yeah. I don't have control over, um, you know, if someone gives me a job or not. I don't have control over um, how the police are going to react towards me doing something. Right. These are things I don't have control over, but I absolutely have control of what I do. And so if I... For myself, if, if I do the best that I can, I'm not always going to get the outcome that I want, but at least I'm living to the best of my ability. Right. I agree. You know, does that, make, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, no, it does, 100%. I, I agree with that. So, it, it it resonates well with me because um, I, I after I got my black belt, I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is great, and I, I trained, and... I never really felt a drive to compete or to, um, you know, push myself that way. I, I didn't do great in the competition scene, even as a, you know, a purple, and I never competed as a brown. Um, and I, I thought I started training with uh, Sean Roberts out in uh, Chino Hills. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I he just he got under me. He got he like he got under my skin about it, like just that, that drive, you know, that passion for competing and things. And I'm like, man, this kid's going to light a fire into my ass. And I'm not going to enjoy this. Cause I'm going to end up competing at some point. And I did, I, I competed as a black belt for the first time. And I was like, I was, I loved it, man. I had so much fun, but it, it hurt. Uh, it hurts as you know, my body was like, okay. I, you know, the, the eight weeks before that, that I was training four or five days a week and, uh, I was eating differently and, um, I mean, I competed at 145, so um, oh, wow. I was yeah. tiny. I was small. I was a small guy, so um, I walk around at 160 normally. So I dropped to 145 for this one, and uh, you know, I I got in there, and and my just he he really did help change my my thought process on it, and 
you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. And I, after all this is all said and done, I, you know, I was getting ready for another one. I was going to try to compete at the next Copa and, uh, this awesome. COVID thing just dropped and I'm like, oh, okay, this is terrible. So, um, but you know, it's, you're right. It does, it does, um, like your mentality, um, it just changes, I guess, with, with the team that you're with and the people that are behind you and, and things like that. So having the right, um, the right people to push you in that direction is also very, very important, I believe. And I, I, it sounds to me like, like you had that all lined up, like you had people ready to go and you're, so your second fight, you went in there and, and then you went on a streak. So and that's awesome. That's um, yeah, like even that, like I didn't, I didn't think of it like, Oh, this is going to be my career. Now. Right. Which is, you know, like I was just, it was like, I lost and I'm like, okay, I would like, there were things that, that like, like what I was saying, there are certain things I don't have, I don't have control over. I can't right. control, well, I can't control me being sick or not being sick. True. Um, in, in some, some avenues. Sure. But, but um, you know, I, I made the decision to go fight and I said, you know what, let's do it one more time where, you know, I'm not as ill prepared um, and let's see how it goes. And then I won that fight, I think in like 38 seconds or something. Yeah, it was super quick. Really fast. And then, and then, you know, I, I think it was like, oh wow, that intensity and that that energy was just. I mean, I, you know, I, I won just tournaments and, and I won some kickboxing matches, but there was nothing as intense as, <laughs> as uh, you know, getting a finish in the cage and just. I mean, that, that that's you know, pure raw energy. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's something that I yeah I I, I think that that definitely has. Um, an appeal, you know, it's, I, I'm 50. There's no way I'd step in a cage ever. And that they say, you know, it's like, I, no, I, I'll be down for months after that. But, you know, just that intensity, um, you know, I, I, I think that that's something that takes a special breed to get in there and do that. And it's something that I, I, you know, I, 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 I hold these people at high, at high regards. I really do. I think that I know the time that it takes to put into it. I know the the sacrifices they make, and I know the pushes that they have to do. And uh, so, you know, you guys, you guys that, especially the guys that started off early in this, um, you know, you guys got all my respect in in the world. And um, no, I'm not going to take out the Tito Ortiz part. I think that was important. I think that's a I think that's a good statement. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but no, you know, um, so let's let's uh, getting into your lineage. Um, you. You were doing uh, some martial arts before you started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, then, yes? Um, no, I mean, so I, I did Kung Fu Sam Tzu. Okay. Um, in high school, and uh, um, I, I, I don't, I don't even really want to bring that up. Okay. <laughs> if, if any, I mean, I don't have a problem bringing it up, but like, I, I, the only thing that really benefited me when I was in high school is I never got in fights. Because Kung Fu had, but my, my, my instructor had me believing that Kung Fu was so deadly, all it took was one punch to kill somebody. Right. So, okay. So, like, I wouldn't get, like, I would never get in a fight. So, um, you know, like, I, I really thought that it was this deadly weapon. Gotcha. And I actually, I, I bring this one up a lot, which is actually it's hilarious. Um, because, in retrospect, this guy would have killed me. Oh, jeez. But, uh, I got into it with the, the captain of the wrestling team in my high school. Oh, shit. And, uh... I don't even know what we were going to fight about. I, have no, I don't remember that part of it. I just remember being like, if I hit him, I will kill him. And I can't kill somebody. <laughs> so, so, so I'm like, I'm not going to fight you, man. I'm not going to fight you. And I walked away. from what would have probably been the worst ass kicking I, I would have ever. I, I have no doubt he would have picked me up over his head. And I, it was, I remember it was in a Wells Fargo parking lot. He wow. would have planted me in the, on, on, onto the concrete. And it would have just been a miserable rain down of punches. <laughs> so I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for for, for uh, kung fu for that. Right, right. But uh, outside that, like you know, I just it it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. I don't know. It wasn't reality based. So is that what you found with jujitsu and and uh, mixed martial arts then, or is that? Um. So I my. First, when I was, I was like, 98 or 99, hold on, oh boy. <laughs> uh, 
Wow. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, my goodness. Hi. I know. The map's over. How can we go? We're good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Look at that. Yeah, we're good. Um, uh, so I started training at the Health Gracie Academy. Okay. That was my first. Like chance of hanging out. Um, up, up, up to that point, I I was I was just a massive fan. And I watched all the UFCs. I I'd actually watched some of the extreme fighting. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, so I knew who Hal was from that. Sure. And like I was like, oh my god, like you know, it was Hal Gracie, he's a Gracie, and and I'd be massively enamored, and and uh, I started training with Hal, and I was there for four and a half years. Okay. Yeah, and then I had my. I had my first two fights when I was at Health Gracie, and then um, there was an opportunity to become a living fighter uh, slash trainer at Millennia okay. in uh, Pomona. Right. And I drove down, and I I uh, I, I had a, a job bouncing, and didn't have anything going on. My girlfriend and I had broken up, and I'm like, I don't know why I just moved to LA and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wasn't, I, I didn't know. I was like, I, I just really love training, and I was like, here's me an opportunity to train and, you know, um, be part of just like, well, at that point, like, jiu jitsu was, was the thing I wanted to do the most. Right. And, um, you know, being able to be a quote, fighter, quote unquote, uh, you know, trainer, um, gave me the opportunity to, to, to just train jiu jitsu. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I moved down and, and uh, you know, joined Millennia. And I was there for, geez, up until my first fight with the UFC. Um, okay. And then um, I started, and at this point, um, Lenny had kind of... Uh, Splintered? Kind of gutted and all the fighters had left. And right. it was, you know, it was uh, just, I remember even trying to get ready for the my, my fight in the UFC. Um, and, you know... I would just come to practices, and it would just be me teaching classes to people. Oh. And so, you know, um, I just needed to leave, and um, I started working with Heath Sims at Team Quest for my wrestling for that fight. Um, and uh, I just felt like, okay, there's way more guys at Team Quest. Right. And um, I, already, I already knew uh, Dan Henderson and, and, and Art Santori pretty well, because um, they would come to Millennia in the earlier days. Mm-hmm. And so I started training at Team Quest. And I was at Team Quest for, gosh, I don't remember how long. Um, and it was at Team Quest. And from there, I moved to the Valley and uh, started training at PKG with uh, Mac Danzig and oh, yeah. uh, uh, Jeremy Humphreys and... Uh, Tom, I don't know, Tom, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, he fought GSP for the title. Uh, he's a commentator for the UFC now. Um, Tom, uh, Dan, Dan Hardy. Who? Um, Dan Hardy. Oh. He, uh, was the outlaw. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was, yeah, out, he was out there too, huh? Yeah, yeah, for a while we had a really good group, um, huh. and uh, so that was essentially where I finished off my career. So, yeah. So how, your belt ranks? Where did you where did you rank at? Where was your where'd you get your you know white, blue, purple, brown, and blacks? Where where? Yeah, yeah. So I got my my blue belt from house. Okay. And then. I moved down, and, and Javi, Javi Vasquez and uh, Lumi Alam were both uh, black belts under yeah. Javier Madero. Right. And so I started working with, I didn't work with Javier very much, but I worked with, with, with Javi and Romy a lot. And uh, I would go down to San Diego periodically. And so I got my purple belt from Rodrigo. Okay. I got my brown belt from Rodrigo and Javi. Okay. Um, and then I got my black belt from Rodrigo and Romy. <laughs> wow. And then, um, and then after I left them, I got my first degree from Rodrigo, and I am now a second degree black belt under John Luna. Okay. Okay. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so it's actually been Carlson since blue belt. 
you want to really go like a lineage wise, right? Because you know, how do we go? Then, then how do we go in the, in, in the Wano? We're partners for years and years. Um, but now, um, Wano and I have always been really close friends, and uh, when he gave me the opportunity to be part of the tsunami team, it just, it just made sense. So, um, especially because John is so non political and not right, <laughs> and, and that's really what I want to be. I don't want to, you know, I'm not. I, I don't hold any flags. I don't, uh, you know, I train with anyone that I want. That anyone that wants to go to my gym is more than welcome to come to my gym. Right. I don't have any, you know, no, any weird affiliations or any weird issues with people. Um, uh, What's it's the, very, very different. Than, I think that's a good uh, thing. I, I, I think that that can be a good thing for people to go and experience things. You know, when when people come into a gym, you don't want to feel like a property, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I for for my time at Health, I, I met so many amazing people, and, and yeah. I, I I'm very thankful for Health. But he had a really really strange mentality, you know, like basically us versus everybody, and right, you know, and right. the other like I, I mean, one thing that Kurt and Health would always say is fuck the other team, right? <laughs> it's us against everybody, and you know, I I guess that mentality is okay to an extent, but but I'm, my 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 feeling is. Don't we want to, you know? Don't we want to grow and, and be better people? Then we then we want to uh, ensure that our students get the, the best product that's that's available. And right, you know, I want them to be able to go to other gyms and, and feel welcome and feel like there isn't this weird, you know, uh, political backing that needs to be abided by, which is in my mind stupid. Right. <laughs> No, I, I agree. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I, I, um, you know, train with Sean is cause he, I mean, he still has, he has that mentality as well. He's like, go train places, you know, get that experience. Yeah, no, I, I said my students, Sean's, uh, I have uh, one student who, uh, he, uh, his, his dad had a Chino. Okay. And I'm, every time I'm like, go train Sean's gym. Go, go in there and, you know, just, just, I always really like Sean. Yeah. It's. That's good. Yeah, he's he's uh that's one of the things I've always you know, Sean's got a good reputation. I, I appreciate that. He's he's kind of the same way, like non political, just you know, it's all about the jujitsu and about about the training. It's not about the it's, there's no politics and I love that. I, I don't I don't wanna get in the middle of any of that either. It's it's exhausting. I, I don't I, I just couldn't I I think it just, it loses it loses, you know, the, the real I mean, so I, I, I can understand that, that at one point that in, in martial arts, you know, it was it, that that was a necessity. But okay. you know, just just like just like we are a uh, a global economic, uh, uh, like we have global economics, right? Why, right. why would we be so so short sighted to think like, oh, it's just our team versus everybody? Right. And just I mean, just the way knowledge is available now. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you limit yourself because you feel like, you know? No, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Because you, if you're not um, attacking the entire body, why would you? Always, yeah, anyways, yeah, 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 You know, you go to different. You go to different places and. Uh, you get different flavors, different body parts to tr- tr- different training partners, you know, it just gives you that different feel. And, um, I've done a couple of gyms like that and, um, it's, it's a good thing. Um, it's a learning experience for sure. Um, a little humbling at times. Um, I've, I've gone to a gym where, you know, I was this recently actually within the last, eh, it's been about two years now, so not too recent, but, um, went to a gym, up in uh, Sacramento and and uh, went against the purple belt. Man, he just tore me up. I'm like, oh my gosh, man, dude, calm yeah. down. I'm almost. I'm uh, at the time I, I was, like I said, I was 49, I think, or 48, and I'm like, oh my god, you're like 18. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> definitely feel yeah. my age, but um, you know, it, it, it's great because it it. it actually lit kind of lit a fire onto me too to um learn more train more um you know just get to get to feel uh 
different bodies and different people pushing me. We have guys at the gym that are like the same thing, 18 years old, 19 years old, come in, you know, piss and vinegar and just like, ah, and we're like, oh my gosh, calm oh, down. Yeah. I, I, I built one, unfortunately. I, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, dude, being a coach for, you know, having a gym, you've got, that's got to be, it's, it's rough. I mean, do you, so how does your gym go? Uh, and I have to, I do have to ask, I have to ask. Yeah. Um, where did you come up with the name? Oh, well, <laughs> so, you know, my, my, my nickname in, in MMA was Godzilla. Yes. Um, so I initially wanted my name, my gym, Godzilla MMA. And the Toro Group that owns the name, got in the, the trademark for Godzilla, wanted, uh, I think it was $25,000 um, huh. the use of the name. <laughs> and I didn't want to go through litigation. Okay. Um, and Godzilla is the king of the kaiju. Okay. Uh, kai, kai, kaiju just means the big monster in Japanese. Okay. Okay. And 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 I actually like it way more than Godzilla and me now. Um, and it was more just because I didn't want to deal with a potential lawsuit, and sure. I didn't want to pay the tour group twenty five grand. There you go. That's <laughs> hey, no, that works out yeah. well. That's that. That's a win win right there. No, I. <laughs> I think it's great, man. I actually, I really like the name. I, I like everything that, that, that uh, you know, we can do all these logos. And yeah. and it, it falls in the same realm as Godzilla. Cause, I mean, sure. like I said, Godzilla is the king of the kaiju. Right, right. But, um, but yeah. That, that was, so. That's hilarious because it's, um, it, I thought maybe it had something to do with, uh, you know, going from, from Tsunami over to something. I thought maybe there was a, a tie in there as well. I wasn't sure. So I had to ask. Well, you know, it actually, our logos, like, um, we have one shirt that, that is Tsunami logo and, okay. and the kaiju is ripping through the, the, the Tsunami. Okay. Um, and it, it worked out perfect just because, you know, they work well together. So, yeah. 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 Definitely. But yeah. That was, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. That's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It was like back in the day when I remember, um, do you remember when uh, tap out didn't have tap out.com? They had in your face.com. Yeah, they had, yeah, they were going through yeah. that whole thing. Same thing, man. They had to go find out who owned it and all that. And they were going to, he was char- going to charge him a crap ton of money to, to buy it. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And they were like, Charles and Dan were like, Nope, not going to do it. We'll make our own way. So no, I think that's a I think that's a great thing, and I like that. So do you and John? Are you affiliates or? Just... Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, Kaiser cool. is an affiliate of Tsunami. Okay, super cool. So, yeah. 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 Well, one of these days I got to get down there and talk to John too. That'd be good. I got I just got to get down there as soon as this whole thing lifts. I was planning on coming out there and and just spending a day and chit chatting and doing that. And dude, uh... if, if you want to come down, you are more than welcome. Like seriously, uh. My house is about 15 minutes. If you want to come chill, have dinner or have lunch or dinner here, awesome. um, just relax. You know, you're more than welcome. Awesome. Uh, open door invitation. If you want to just come train or just relax, hang out. Uh, I have, a, like I said, I've got a very, very open door policy about that. So I, I, I will absolutely 100% take you up on all that because, yeah, awesome. I'd love yeah, to do that too. stuff. So, absolutely. Um, and. Uh, I'll keep all. I'll keep all the young uh, guys. <laughs> yeah, keep them on the other side of the room, please. I have to survive this. I, yeah, no. I. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I have one kid, Jake. Um, he's 21 now. Uh-huh. I started training with him. So I, I was partnered in another gym for years, um, and then split off to do kaiju by myself. Um, but um, my student base followed me. Um, nice. And Jake, I got him when he was 15. Oh, wow. And he was just a meek little kid and, and uh, super, super, just like a genuinely good kid. Um, I finally got him, I convinced him to start wrestling his junior year. Uh, and he got, he went to CIF his junior and senior years of high school. Nice. And found this drive. And now he's my, my purple belt killer now. He's <laughs> just, he like, seriously, this kid is such a beast. He, uh, whenever, whenever guest black belts come that, that have an attitude, because I can't physically go like I once did, I'm like, sure. Jake, get him. And, uh, <laughs> Sick him. Freaking monster. He's 21 and doesn't, doesn't do anything but, but play video games. He goes to Occidental College, eats right, doesn't, uh, doesn't drink, doesn't, doesn't drink caffeine. Wow. Like, he's just, like, such a stoic, young, good young man. 
so funny. Like for, for his twenty first birthday, I'm like, let's let's get a beer. He's like, I don't drink beer. Wow. All right, cool. You know, it's great. That's all. Yeah. You know, you don't have an obligation to drink. You know. Right. Right. But yeah, he just uh, he loves training jiu jitsu and going to school and and uh, yeah, he's my he he's my little my little killer. He's your he's your. Sorry, go ahead. When, when, when he was 15, I just, I knew that there was something in him. Yeah. I was just like, once we're able to get through and, and tap into the philosophy that's inside you, Jake, you're going to be a beast. Yeah. And we finally tapped into it. Yeah, he's a freaking monster. It, isn't that, I, I think, um, in a way, I'm, I'm jealous of that. You know, I, I to, to hear that story of, you know, him getting that good and just being, I get jealous of that sometimes. Cause I'm like, man, I wish I had started jujitsu back in the day when I, you know, and, and just stuck with it. Cause I did, I started back in the day, but I let it go. And, and, and life gets in the way of family things, school work, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, your journey is your journey. Right. And when you start and what you do with it, I, I, I think that oh, that's really irrelevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, 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 like whether you attain being a world champion or not, or I, I, or you fight MMA or not, I, I think all of that's irrelevant. It's more than than like the the, the journey of life that we that, that we undertake. And if if we get an opportunity to have something like just to that, hopefully makes us better people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then right. then, then then you're getting then you're maximizing it no matter what. Yeah, and that's. I, I really believe that for the most part, jujitsu has, has definitely made my life a lot better. It, it puts me in contact with people that, you know, when I, when I was writing for, um, on the mat, um, I got to sit and talk with some amazing people and, and, yeah. um, you know, you just, it's great. Submission fighter magazine, same thing. I mean, sitting down and talking with Hoist Gracie and, you know, different people in, in that, in, in our community, in our world that were at the time, you know, were the superstars and, um, meeting so just the, the superstars of our era, you know, that time frame was just yeah, amazing, yeah. you know, and, and even nowadays, um, I, I still get like giddy when I, when I, you know, go to meet one of the, some, you know, star that's, I look at and go, Oh my gosh, that's, you know, that's Rafael Lovato Jr. You know, oh my God, I want to go sit and talk with him. You know, I just, um, right, right. like I, 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 it took me a long time to even reach out and talk to you and not, uh, not to sound weird or anything, but you know, just, I, I was on messenger. I'm like, all right, that doesn't sound right. I don't want to, I don't want to just come out and say, Hey Gabe. So, you know, just super weird. Uh, just cause yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I just, um, so I, I have so much respect for for you guys that that have done this and and brought um, this level and and the and the, and you're teaching um, these kids and these and these adults too. But I mean, these kids, the in my opinion, the right way to do things. And because there are bad seeds that come into the gym that want to come in and hurt people, and they want to come in and and uh, we're not going to mention any names because I know that you had direct dealings with that. And, um, you know, back in the day and it's, it's, it's a tough thing when you see these kids, um, you know, turn the wrong way and it's great that yeah, you guys are yeah. there to, to keep them on the straight. So, um, I mean, you know, like there's always, we have the ability to go so many different ways and, and I hope right. that, you know, in those that, that, that take in jiu-jitsu, Hopefully, it, it touches them in different ways. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and I hope that I, I and again, I, I, I it's kind of stupid and cliche, but as I've gotten older, I understand martial arts more. Sure. I understand like the, the martial way more. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, cause I, dude, I, my time at Halps, it was there was no martial arts involved. You know what I mean? Like, there, it was really genuinely. It was, right. you know, I. It, House loved the like we were getting street fights and House loved hearing our stories and and like when I when I think of like the I don't know we, we, we weren't good people we were we were bad people you know what I mean but right. but the, the 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 core of us was were not really you know focusing on on the betterment of our community more than just you know what was best for ourselves I mean, and I think now when 
I look at my school, it's, it's what's, what's, I'm making better people for my community. There you go. There whether, you go. whether it's kids, whether it's a, you know, a fit, I, I'm, I have a, I, I bring this up so much because actually I find so much pride in this. I have this guy, Keith Smuckler. Keith had never done anything physical his entire life. He owned a, a successful accounting firm, you know, um, and he started doing jiu-jitsu at 48. You know, forty eight and like forty eight years old decided okay. to do shit. Okay, like the guy and look physically, and he'll admit it, he's not you know he's not an athlete by, by any stand. He's just a you know he's a he's a, a dad and and, a, and an accountant. And uh, uh, at fifty, he's like he just turned fifty four. At fifty, he goes, I want to do a tournament, <laughs> and I go, let's do it. He yeah. goes, okay, let's do it, and so. We got him prepared and everything. He went out there and he freezes. Oh. Doesn't he? the guy takes him down? The guy takes his back. He finally wakes up right before he gets choked. Oh! And oh. I was so happy and proud to be there with that guy. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and, and then he goes, "I want to do the Masters Worlds." And I go, "Okay, let's do it." Sweet. So you know, fast forward eight months, we, we do the Masters Worlds. He stalemate the whole time. Doesn't do anything. And it, the other guy wins, and he goes, I want to do another one. <laughs> and I go, dude, if you want to do this, I will do this with you a thousand times. I don't, like, the fact that you're finding this this this, this drive that you didn't even know existed right. is all I care about. Like, the fact that you, at, at 50, 50, then 52, are trying to do tournaments, like, that is inspiring to me. Yeah. So we go into his third one, and he wins his third one, past the guy, and the 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 look of elation and excitement, <laughs> and he still to this day is like that was the best moment <laughs> of my life. Like yeah. that that to me is ten times more inspiring than winning world titles and and you know fighting at at, at Mandalay Bay or or being on television. All that means nothing. Like seeing this guy come out of the shell and do something that he is not even prepared for. Right. That he's not mentally or physically, his entire livelihood, uh, he's not prepared for to go out and do that, was way more impressive to me. Dude, that's, that, that does hit home uh, uh, quite a bit. It, you definitely um, see somebody that has, has gone from, like you said, never aspired to do any of that never aspired to be world champion just wants to get in there and compete and that that has to be a proud moment for a coach you know and especially after his win you know he he probably just felt on top of the world i just that 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 impresses me i love that I, those are the stories that i live for you know i'm that in like right now i'm all excited because I, I get anxious and i'm like oh, okay yeah that's great you know those things are those are great things to I hear. Was, yeah, I mean, I was inspired. You know, that's oh, yeah. like, like, that, you never would think that, that, you know, when I was a young, like, hungry jiu-jitsu guy that, that in my 40s I'd be excited about <laughs> seeing, you know, guys in their 50s compete for the first time. But for me, that was way more awe-inspiring and, and just, you know, I like, it gave me a feeling of, of, of satisfaction. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that I, you know, and even when he lost, I mean, he froze. His first, the first time he, you know, but but I went to the, I drove to the tournament with him. We talked the whole time. You know, I, I we did all the preparation. He went on the mat and he just froze. He <laughs> <laughs> you know, got complete seats right. And then we drove, drove drove home together, and you know, he's all upset and bummed out. But I'm sure. like, dude, you went out there and did it. Like, yeah. <laughs> for you to do a tournament at fifty. To finally make a decision to like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like, dude, so that, like, there are people that, that do just their entire lives that never can never step on the mat. I was just gonna say that there's there's probably uh, what seventy five percent that probably never yep. step on the mat. Yep. I mean, come on, yeah. that guy. I, that's exactly what it is. A lot of the guys, a lot of the white belts and the blue belts, they'll come to me. And they'll ask me that question, you know, hey, so uh, do you think I should compete? And I'm like, look, yeah, competing is is a different thing. It's a different animal. Being prepared for it is important. Um, it's not the be all end all, but definitely do yep. it. If you feel like you want to do it, absolutely. I say go out and experience it. Um, I didn't do it enough as a white belt or a blue belt. And I think that kind of killed my 
my drive. And now as a black belt, man, I really want to compete more. But that's not the point. I, 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 I think that what the, and they, they would ask about, you know, oh, well, what if I lose? I'm all, who cares? Who, who cares? Exactly. Who gives a shit if you win or lose? The whole point is you go out there, you competed, you did it, you, you did what most people will never do. Think about that for right. a minute. You, you know? put it on the line. Absolutely. And, and that, like, and, and that en- enough is you find something about yourself. Yep. Right? And I oh. think that, like, that was the biggest thing for fighting. Sure. You find out more about yourself, yes. you know, um, about your determination, about your, your, your inner fortitude. Like the, the, the quality that, like, you know, um, you don't really under uh, appreciate until you're actually, until you've gone through that, uh, that fire, that, yeah, that, that fire. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, I agree. And that's why I think that's one of the things that I was kind of curious about touching on with your, when you, when you lost and you came back, I mean, you, your first match you lost a lot of people like i said that fire man they they would never they'd be like oh nope i'm out this isn't for me i'm gone you know but you didn't do that and that's that says a lot to me and i think it says a lot to a lot of other people as well well i think the the one the one and again this is something that that and a lot of people like that feel like the ultimate fighter was the the, you know that that that's what i'm known from but they don't know that after the Ultimate Fighter, I was essentially uh, blacklisted from MMA. Um, I was kicked out of the UFC. The the commission in California stripped me of my license, so I couldn't fight in California for some weird reason. What? Um, and, well, there's a whole backstory to that. Like, I was supposed to fight. You remember when K one fought uh, when they had the fight to call us from him? Yeah. Um, when Hoist fought Sakuraba Sak- Part Two, and then Brock Lesnar was the was the headliner. Yep. I was supposed to fight on that card, and I was going to make a lot of money to fight on that card. But for some reason, um, when I was doing my licensing, I already had my license, but they canceled my license and said that I was ill-prepared because of the TV show. I was ill-prepared mentally to fight. What? Yeah, yeah. And incidentally, the, 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 the head of the commission at that point, his next job was for the Fertitas. Uh, at one of their casinos. Oh, I'm not interesting. I, look, I, you know, I, we can say whatever we want to say, but, but <laughs> you know, um, Armando what was Armando's last name, but yeah, he was the, the head. But so this guy was back, blacklisted for fighting in California, wow. and then and then I had neck surgery, um, so I had my neck fused. So I spent a year recovering after being blackballed from fighting. Um, and I had to spend a year just sitting on my butt thinking about, you know, here I, I've, I've basically reached the lowest point in my career because, you know, I went from being a, 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 a well, like a, a, a looked at prospect to, you know, being at that point just blacklisted from, from MMA. And then, then I had to have my neck fused. Wow. Um, so if there was ever a time that I had to like really look at myself and, and be like, what, like, what are you doing? You know, it was that year of recovery. And then I came back and I, I won six fights in a row, won the TPS title, right. um, and then got re-signed to the UFC when they said that I would never fight for them again. You know, um, as far as determination and, and, and whatever will I had, um, I think that, you know, there's one takeaway for myself. Um, that was far more of a, of a, okay. Yeah. yeah I, I can say that I'm a fight. You know what I mean? I sure. can't, not for one second do I, you know, like a moment like that to come back after basically, you know, a, a low point. Basically my career's, my career's over. Right. My career's over. Right. Um, you know, and then having to have my neck for you, so now I'm physically unable to do anything. Um, to battle back and then, you know, um, Beyond. I feel like I don't know. I, I that that is a, a, a far more point of uh, that. That's a more defining. Made of. That's more of a defining point of who you truly are. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. More so than you know. I mean, like, like, look, that fighting and then losing and then coming back, and you know, I, I look, I, I lost with the, the WC title, and then I fought again, and you know, I, I've never been one to. I, I lose, I get back up, and I go again. Sure. Never been an issue for me, but um. For myself, 
when I when I look at you know when I look at obviously I'm looking at things more internally than anybody else. But uh, that was a time in my life that I had to really wake up and like, what are you fighting for? Yeah. Who are you? What do you do? Like, what is you know? What are you doing with this life of yours? You, you know? had to find your drive. You had to refine what exactly. your passion and your fire. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. The that's... reason the reason why I was fighting in the first place. Sure. Because it wasn't for money. It wasn't for fame. Right. You know, it wasn't for any of those things. There was, you know, uh, for my own personal reasons, and I had to kind of be re, I don't know, kind of reborn with that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that because that's. You know, I think a lot of people, again, would have um, sat on the couch and said, oh, what was me and not and not move forward. There's a lot of people that don't, you know, they, they get dealt a hand and they just don't know what to do with it. And for you to be able to come out on the other side, it's impressive. And, and you're doing so I mean, that, well. That was, I mean, it was a, a, a really garbage time in my life. Yeah. You know, I mean, just really just like... Yeah, that's tough, uh, man. But you know what? It's uh, that is unfortunately how life—not unfortunately, but how life unfolds, and we have our ups and we have our downs, and yeah. we hopefully come out the other side. And and uh, I will say that all of that has made me stronger. It makes me appreciate things more. It makes me understand what's important. I bet the crazy part is uh, last night I was uh, uh, my eight-year-old. She was going to bed, and, and um, I was I was. I lay with her before she was to bed, and last night she was, um, she was like, Dad, at one point you were saying the song. And I just started laughing. I was never famous. And then she was like, well, you were on TV and stuff. And I go, yeah, I was on TV. And, um, and I go, she's like, but, like, when we go places, people know you. And I go, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Um, but what is most important to me is this. Yeah. This moment right here. What's important to me now is relationships. Like, what is important to me is that hopefully I'm building better people in my community. Right. That's what's important. Not, you know, someone coming up to me and, and, and talking to me or wanting a picture or, or getting into a club because I'm known. Or, you know, I, I think in my 20s, that might have been, you know, that might have felt really good. But, but at 42, my main focus is, is, is family and community. And um, I think that that is because of the ups and downs. Agreed. I no. think. Um, I I agree. So I, you, and I think that makes you a better coach because you're going to see these youngsters go through this same bullshit, and you're going to feel yep. what they feel. And like like uh, the the was it Kenneth the the fifty two year old. The the, What's that? the Kenneth was that his name the fifty two year old that did his tournament? Oh no no Keith Keith Keith, Keith. sorry yeah, um, Keith. sorry Keith if if you hear this I apologize I it's I have bad memory so um, no he um, you know guys like that 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 is what marks people you know what I mean that's that marks you as a good coach that marks you as as him being uh, just moving forward and and having this. Um, I, I, th those defining moments. And I think that th if you hadn't gone through this, sh the shit that you went through and the, the issues that you had and, you know, personally, um, professionally, mentally, physically, everything, you wouldn't be who you are today. And you would not be able to, to maybe direct some people that are going to be in the same boat that you, uh, that you're going to see. So. Oh no, I, I agree hundred percent. I, I definitely, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm obviously like you always, like I was saying earlier, you could always there's you have regrets in the career and sure. everything, but everything, you know, I, it doesn't happen for a reason, but it brings you to the point where you are in this, where you are now. Sure, the dream. And I, I appreciate that that I have more that I appreciate family that I appreciate, you know. Uh, close relationships more than I, I care about all the frivolous BS of, you know, being, being, uh, I don't know, famous or, or, or uh, you know, chasing the, the, the stupidity of, of you know, pictures. And, I don't know. I agree. I all agree a hundred percent. It's, yeah. you, that's, and that's, it's funny that you bring that up because, um, I had to, I questioned myself as to why I wanted to start up a podcast and, and do some things that I wanted to do. And I, I, 
I, I, I want to do it because I love it. I love talking to people. I love like sitting down yeah. and just getting into it. And, you know, we've been talking for an hour and 25 minutes and, you know, I, I, yeah. Right. And I feel like I can, yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel like I could talk forever, man. And, and, uh, you know, there, there are people that I, I want to reach out to and talk to. And, and it, I don't, I'll be honest, man. If people listen, great. I, I love that. But uh, my honest feeling is I want to connect with the people that, um, have, have always inspired me and the people that I want to talk to. And I'm so thankful that you took the time out, uh, to talk to me today, even with the kids there and all this chaos going on in your <laughs> life, man, I, I truly appreciate it. it. It means a lot to me. So, oh, um, I, I thank you so much. And yeah. it, honestly, I, I, uh, I hope when all of this, uh, nonsense is over that, uh, we can come and get some mat time and just yeah. hang out and grab a coffee or, Love that. or a tea if you don't drink coffee. I do. Uh, I'm a coffee, um, coffee, whiskey, beer, man. Okay. Bring it. You, what, Perfect. <laughs> we, we, can have, we can have coffee in the morning. We can have a beer in the evening. Excellent. So. I am absolutely a hundred percent in. <laughs> but awesome. um all right man well i i know you got a lot to do i i i feel like this is a um i, I don't want to take up too much of your time but I, i've already t- hour and 25 minutes so um i appreciate the invite i will absolutely 100 percent take you up on it and we'll do a part two if that's okay we'll we'll do some stuff um yeah, and i'll know. and we'll do it on video this time we'll have some fun um is, if there's how do how are people going to get a hold of you? Uh, what's give out you know all your information, and then what I'll do is I'll put it in the links um, in the comments when I when I load it up on. Yeah. Uh, well, first uh, we'll, we'll kaiju MMA dot com. That's uh, the gym's website. Okay. Um, we also have you know the Facebook and the, the Instagram the kaiju MMA, um, and we also have the the YouTube channel, which is also kaiju MMA. Okay. Um, and that would be the best way to get a hold of me because the gym to me is, you know, my everything. So, yeah. uh, I, I, uh, if anybody wants to contact me, those would be the best ways. Uh, and I, I answer all the emails. I answer all the phone calls. Uh, even if one of my staff answers, I, I eventually get back to everybody. Anyways. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, those would be the best ways. Uh, kaiju dash MMA.com, which is the website and then Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube Kaiju MMA. All right, sounds good. I'll put the links up as well in the on the comments, and I'll I'll work on this today. It should be up um, hopefully tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, and I'll shoot you a link, awesome. and then yeah, send me a link, and I'll I'll post it everywhere. Awesome. All right, that's awesome. All right, all right, all right man. Thank awesome. you, good. Thank you, man. Yes, I'm right, glad we were able to catch up. We will we will do it again. All right, all right brother. I hope so. Talk, Later. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.